So in this video we're going to follow straight on from part 2 and finish it off where we left off on this job and take you through a little bit more of the process that we've gone through on the back end of the car. So the spray seam sealer gun has arrived now, that's what this bit of kit is. So these are basically like an air operated corking gun, you put your airline on the bottom, you've got an air adjustment on this side and obviously you've got a nozzle. So the way that these actually work, you'd put a proper sprayable cartridge in the spray gun, it's in the gun itself and it's got air operated which will force that out. Now, when you put the cap back on these, that'll seal everything up airtight. Now it's got a separate cap on the end here, which is for the sprayable part of it. So if you notice on the very front, there's a dial that you can twist, like so, that will change it from being sprayable to a normal corking gun. So you can use this for putting beads on as well as using it as a sprayable. Now, for this particular job, we want it to be used for sprayable. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that on, which acts like an air cap for a spray gun and flip, makes the air flow down to catch where the sealer is and then atomizes the sealer. And then we're just gonna turn the end round towards the sprayable section, and then we can use that to spray. Now, I had this from a place called Wayside Adhesives. The gun itself was 179 pounds and I got two tubes of sealer, they're sprayable sealer, um, and they've got a whole range of products that are designed for the automotive industry. So I will leave a link to the gun and also the sealer in the description because this is, for the money, a very, very good sealer gun. And it's gonna, it's one of them things that we've been looking at for a while, but we've just not got around to putting in yet. However, with one of these now, something like the back end of this car that we're gonna do here, we can get a much better finish and a much more factory look to the car. Now, I tried it a few different ways and the best way that I found to get a really neat line on the sealer was to just outline mask the area up first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mask up the area that I wanna put the sealer onto. So I'm gonna mask up each side and the channel that's left down the middle of the tape is where I'll spray the sealer and that's going to leave me with really nice clean edges, a really nice shape on the sealer lines because the issue is 99.9% .9 of cars these days this sealer is applied by a robot in a factory and obviously you know a human touch is never quite as smooth as a robot so for our point of view I can put some tape down I'm just using an alpha knife here just to trim the tape just to give it that nice angle around underneath where that bracket is to make sure I can get a nice shape on the sealer so that I can try and replicate as best I can the factory finish that was on there previously so that when it's done and it's painted this sealer that we're going to apply to the back won't look out of place. Now this is the sealer gun itself in action. It does have a tiny little bit of overspray but the beauty of the sprayable sealer over say the normal PU sealer like the panel bond and the normal sealers that we'd put in a cartridge gun um, this stuff stays quite wet for quite a long time so even though it did leave a tiny bit of overspray on the back panel I could just literally get a tiny bit of panel wipe on a cloth and wipe it straight off with no effort whatsoever and the other thing is because it does stay wet for that little bit longer when you peel your tape off you've got really nice clean tape lines and a really nice looking factory seam left on the car now this is the way that I found was the best way to do it and the cleanest way to do it um, we use some of this on these seams here we use some along the bottom of this panel as well where it was sealed up before previously and also inside the back of the boot where the repairs have been done in the back of the boot we wanted to make sure that everything was sealed up nicely but as you can tell we've got a really nice even sprayed seam there everything looks good and once that's painted over it'll look really nice so this shot of me painting here is literally straight after applying the sealer now this particular sealer um, you can paint over it wet on wet within two hours um, of applying it so I basically pretty much got almost everything ready so that as soon as I put the spray sealer on I could just go straight over this and I've had no issues whatsoever um, this car is now fully dried through and 
now this car to be fair 99% of this car is now rebuilt in the workshop at the moment so I know that it's gone over the sealer without any issues there's no paint cracking you know there's no issues when I baked the paint off at the after I sprayed this or anything like that it was absolutely spot on and as you'll see as I put the base coat down once this is all covered up in a minute you wouldn't really know if you know you came to this car in the future that this wasn't factory it looks right it's got a nice even spray to where the sealer was and that sealer gun really made the difference for me and like I said it is something we've been looking at for a while we do quite often do a few panel jobs like this um, they're not something that I video very often because they're very time consuming to do um, these panel jobs like this and also they're very time consuming to film and edit because there's just so much stuff going on on a job like this now I'm using a solvent base I'm just going to give this one really heavy coat and then one drop coat I don't need to go mad on this back end because obviously everything underneath here is covered but I do want to make sure it's fully coloured up and obviously it's sprayed nice and even and looks as it should before we start rebuilding the back of it now on my note of the sort of video side of things, I know a lot of you guys at the moment aren't for some reason getting notifications. So if you are subscribed or even if you aren't subscribed, do subscribe, hit the notification bell as well and make sure you hit the notification bell for all uploads. And also if you enjoy the videos, please give us a share, leave a comment and also a thumbs up on the videos if you enjoy the content that we put out. It's completely free to do and it will just help us that little bit more with the YouTube algorithm to get our videos suggested out there a little bit more because at the moment for some reason the view count seems to be dropping off quite a bit even though I am putting a lot more into the editing side of things and a lot more into the content side of things. So a few shares, a few more likes, a few more comments from you guys would be greatly appreciated. Just take that couple of seconds if you don't mind and just help us in that YouTube algorithm, which is the bane of our life of YouTubers, just to help us up the up the recommendations a little bit and get a little bit further out there. Now, I'm just doing a very quick drop coat on this. I don't need to go mad on this because it is obviously a back panel. Every single bit of this bit that I am painting here is fully covered up, but I just want to make sure that everything's painted and everything's nice and even. Now, for the clear coat, I'm just going to go over this with one really good heavy coat um, throughout this video and in the next bit of painting that I'm doing in a minute I'm using the final systems clear that you guys have been asking me a lot to take a look at now I have found the best thing to do with this final systems clear is to use this neat just use it two to one but don't use their hardeners I've used um, a Churchill medium hardener in this I find that it doesn't pull back with the medium hardener it flashes off just as well and just as nice but I can lay it on really nice really flat really thick and I found that personally for me it's almost best to go as kind of like back to back with two wet coats I've put a light coat down or a heavy coat like this and then say a light coat or I'd put a light coat and then straight over with a heavy coat and I just stop um, I'd still get this, you know, be getting the same amount of coverage as far as the clear coat goes. I'd still be getting two full coats on there, but I found that if I do it back to back and I don't leave a massive flash off, um, it's a very quick, efficient clear to use. And if you use a medium or say a slow hardener in it instead of like they're fast and they're extra fast and that sort of thing, it will not pull back at all. It will keep an outstanding gloss and it's quite a nice clear to use. But as I say, I have found it best to use it just straight two to one with no reducer or thinner or anything in it and just basically just smash it straight on leather it up and it comes out really nice really nice gun finish to this stuff um, and after a bake it polishes up lovely too which is a bonus for us as a shop so on you know repairs like this and on little bump corner jobs and one two panel jobs it's absolutely ideal it's quite cheap it's very efficient stuff to use and it's quick as far as boo time goes as well. So as you can see from the final shots there, all this now looks like a factory back end. It doesn't look like something that we have repaired. Now although this is all covered, that's how I want 
a car to look when it leaves the shop. Whether all that's covered or not, it makes no difference to me. It's still a part of the car that we have repaired and we have touched, so I want it to be spot on. Now, I've left this Honda Jazz footage in here um, just because I was painting the rear bumper for this Hyundai um, in the booth along with this Honda Jazz, so I thought I'd leave the clear coat in for you guys on this as well. Now for this I'm using my Segola 4600 DVR clear, it's a 1.3 XL setup. Now as far as my gun setup for this goes, I'm spraying at 2 bar, I'm spraying at full fan and I'm spraying 2 turns out on the fluid. Um, I'm using the same clear again, this is the final systems clear. It's ideal for you know, run of the mill jobs like this, um, it's quite a nice clear to use um, for stuff like this. Again, I'm using it just straight two to one with the color, uh, with the clear and the hardener. No reducer in it whatsoever, and I'm using the medium hardener, which is the way that I have found personally best to use this clear coat. Now, it was a bit of a mental week at the shop, so you'll have to excuse the fact that there is a little bit of rubbish in the booth. Um, it's just been one of them weeks. The bake's packed up on the booth, so I've been trying to sort that out. Hence, why there's a space heater in the booth at the moment. Um, so when this car's painted, I've got something there that I can try and force dry it with um, after it's been painted because for some reason the bakes just decided to completely go kaput this week. But hey, it's just one of those weeks, I guess. Um, but I thought I'd leave this in there as a little bit of bonus footage because I know in previous videos or recent videos I've not been including quite as much paint. We've been looking a bit more at repairs and different aspects that are in the industry and not just always the painting side of things so I thought I'd leave the Honda Jazz in as well as the bumper so this is the bumper that has been repaired and painted for this Hyundai that we've just put this back end on this was a second hand bumper it had a few little niggly bits of repairs on it um, but very very light um, but compared to the boot and the rest of the car it would have let the car down not to give this a quick flash over with a fresh coat of paint and just get rid of the small repairs that this needed. So again, I'm just going pretty quick actually on this day. Um, I think when I was painting this, it was around about 34, 35 degrees in the booth. There was no heat on at all. It was just a very hot summer's day. Um, so I wanted to get this in, um, get some clear smashed on it and get out of the booth really, because um, it was unbearable in the booth. It was a lot hotter in the booth because of where the booth pulls the air from than it was actually outside in the sun. Um, so it was a case of getting in, smashing two really nice coats of wet clear down on this car and then getting straight back out. Now in that little cut there, I literally went out, topped up the spray gun with some more clear coat. And I've come back in and I'm just going straight back over this. I'm not leaving any flash off time on it apart from maybe two to three minutes that it took me to go out and mix an extra spot of clear up and then I'm just going straight back over this and you'll see at the end the results speak for themselves really with this clear it's quite nice and for the price point I think most places have got it for about between 50 and 60 pounds a kit I think this final systems ultimate clear um, it's quite nice stuff to use um, for something that's like 55 60 quid um, I'm yet to get in another big tin of the Multimix and use that a bit more. Um, I need to order a tin of that up shortly so I can get a little bit more gun time with that um, and look at the new HS version of that a little bit more because um, I've seen and heard great things about that. The same as I'd seen and heard a lot of things about this Ultimate Clear Coat, um, which is the reason why I got a little bit of it in. Just to see what my thoughts were on it, because um, I've seen a lot of the smart repair lads and in quite a few Facebook groups that a lot of you guys are liking this clear coat. And after using it for a week or two myself, it is quite a nice clear coat to use. It's very effortless to spray, I'd say. It's got quite a, a fast flash off time. Um, my only bugbear with it is what I mentioned in a previous video that I found that if I hit bake, it would make it pull back even if I left it like for a half an hour before I baked a car it would pull back quite a bit on um, a bake cycle so I found that using the medium hardener in it 
um, and I've just got some of like the generic Churchill medium hardener. Um, I found that that did the trick in order to stop it pulling back and leave it, you know, looking exactly like it did off the gun. Because when I go in and I paint a car and it looks really nice off the gun like that does, personally for me, you know, I don't want to hit bake and then find out I've got to polish it all because it's all pulled back. Now, sometimes it's not too bad because it might pull back a tiny little bit so you could just run a trizac disc over it. But if it pulls back a lot, then, you know, you're going to be flat and polishing a lot of a, more of a car than you want to just for the fact that the clear coat's hardener's not really very well matched to the clear coat. So I'd rather... Um, I tweaked the way that I was using this a little bit. I like, as you can see here, I'm not really hanging about with it. I'm just going for two very heavy wet coats on this rear bumper. Um, I've left pretty much zero flash off time on it. Um, and when I came in the next day, this bumper will be absolutely, you know, just as glossy the next morning as it is now without any issues. Um, so, <clears throat> and I found the biggest thing for that was not using their hardener um, and not putting any reducer in it. I found that doing those two things made this twice the clear that I thought it was at the start. Um, it left a much nicer finish. It sprayed, a l it felt like it sprayed a lot better and it, as far as like sagging and stuff like that, I had no issues with any of it sagging. Um, it just overall felt a, like a really, really nice clear coat to use and you can, as you can see there's no issues whatsoever with putting this stuff on really flat and really wet. So you can get a nice off the gun factory finish with that with no issues at all. Um, as you can see on this Honda, that's absolutely spot on. And the same for the bumper. The bumper's got a few nibs, more nibs in it than I'd like, but it was behind this car that I'd already been painting um, and obviously clearing. And the airflow's going that way, so I'd expected to get a few nibs in it, but a quick polish on that and that'll be sorted. So that's it for today's video guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you again soon for the next video. Bye for now.